Hello, my name is Kamil Novak, and I will, during my speech, uh, briefly present a few observations and thoughts uh, related to the so-called metal workers' graves. And metal worker graves are an interesting European phenomenon that ha has its origin in, origins in an analytic. In my paper, I would like to focus on this issue to, in the context of armfields in western part of Poland and eastern Germany. I will focus mainly on the Late Bronze Age. Mm. At the beginning, a basic question should be asked, what are metal workers' graves and how are they distinguished? Here there are several bi bibliographical footnotes together with categories of objects according to which the authors distinguish such graves. Everyone agrees that the main determina determinants are objects directly related to casting process, that is casting molds, crucibles and tuyers. Some authors add to this called, uh, to this called working tools, like hammers and chisels. Uh, in this way, two categories of metal workers' graves are separated, smiths and founders. However, the connection between hammers and chisels with metallurgy is unclear, in my opinion. It's difficult to state unambiguously whether these tools were used only in metallurgy-related activities and were not used, for example, for, wood, for woodworking. Uh, if the chisel do not appear in the direct context with other objects related to metallurgical activities, I, de I, decide, I decided for my research that they aren't a determinant of, the, of those activities. And for example, for better images of this problem, I present uh, here the uh, inventory of grave four from the cemetery, cemetery in Bełcze, Western Poland. It's a pit grave richly equipped, equipped with various types of objects, including chisels, sickle, fishing hooks, and glass beads. Mm. Should, should we call this grave as the metal worker grave, or perhaps the grave of a fisherman, or a far farmer, or maybe a local collector was buried here? I know that we cannot answer these questions, and I also know that we must consider with the great caution that the grave inventory reflects prehistoric reality. Mm. For this research, I decided that the determinants of metal worker graves are tools directly, directly related to the metal casting process, such as casting moose tuyers and crucibles. For the study area, I identified 23 sites where 27 graves containing characteristic equipment were discovered. As you can see, we can talk about any general pattern of the occurrence of metal worker graves. A, land, a large number of them occurred in today's Silesia, around Legnica and Wrocław. Yeah. Yeah. As well in the territory of North Central Saxony and South East Brandenburg. The number of these finds dec decreases to the north, and the furthest are the graves from Buzo and Sobiejuchy, dated to the early Iron Age. This phenomenon does not occur at all in Pomerania and Mecklenburg. Perhaps the casting mold from Kratzenburg, Landkreis uh, Rostock, comes from the graves, but this is not really clear. Uh, only from eight sites, metal worker graves from the entire collection have been systematically examined. The other was discovered accidentally or during amateur excavation in the 19th or 20, uh, early 20th century. Some of the older finds generally come from the cemetery area and it's not possible to fit it to a specific grave. When the casting molds were discovered along with fragments of ceramics, they most likely came from a damaged grave. From, the, uh, from better documented graves, we can take a closer look at the construction of the graves. All graves from this area are cremation graves, mostly flat, with one of or several urns. Only in Gebernitz, in Saxony, it was a tumulus grave. Mm. In the case of the grave from Bartosław, there are five urns. Two or three occurred in the grave from Butzo. Mm. Human remains were usually in the urn or in and next to the urn, like Klein La in Kleinjawa. In a few cases, the remains are located directly in the burial pit, like in, Koze, in Kajet or Gogolin Strzebniów. In the grave from Buzo, the iron was covered with an upside-down vessel. Only of the 
entire collection, only five graves have been anthropologi anthropologically analyzed. Anthropological studies of bone remains show that mainly men were buried in the graves. Only in one examined grave, the remains of a woman were, identi uh, were identified. However, that five analyzed graves are a very small sample. The graves are different from each other in their inventory. The main differences are visible in the number of vessels. In the case of uh, Kleinyawa, in the grave were only the urn and two fragments of small vessels. Ten vessels were discovered in grave 73 in Piekary and, and 50 in Wartosław. In some graves there are, were stone objects that were not casting moulds, such as the Kandelurenstein from Bataune or the stone axe from grave 42 in Legnica. Metal, working, uh, metal workers' casting tools are also different. The most common are stone moulds, less often clay ones, and only from the damaged grave from Brzeg Głogowski comes a metal mould that was discovered together with an object matching to the, uh, to the negative. The items uh, most often produced in moulds from metal workers' graves are socketed axes, then sickles, razors, and arrowheads. Moulds used for tool production are more common than, uh, than those used for ornaments, like knobs in the grave from Gogolin's Shebius. Mm. Mm. Graves from oh, that is too. graves from Kazze, Legnica, Piekare, and Battaune had had in their inventory casting cores, uh, and from graves from Lupsal and Boyadwa contained two years of the same kind. Mm. The overview of information presented above indicates that the main similarities within the group of metallurgical graves are the occurrence of metallurgical tools and cremation. There is no single deposition pattern that would allow to, de to determine, determine, determine exactly who were the people buried in the graves, what was their social status or role in society. This means that we don't really know much about the Arnfield's metal workers. But in that situation, what kind of information should we expect, that, expect studying it, the so-called metal, work, metal worker graves? Mm, I think we can get a lot of information about the prepar preparation of metal workers' tool, tools and the casting production process itself. Mm. By studying the casting molds, we can determine the type of raw material from which they were produ produced and its provenance. Petrographic studies of clay and stone molds from graves in Legnica showed that the raw material was mainly local. Katodo the luminescence studies of moulds from Klein Yawa showed that the moulds were made of one type of sandstone, most likely from one outcrop. Mm. By observing the surface, surface of casting moulds macroscopically, we can identify the preparation traces of stone raw material, reconstruct the stone cutting techniques or used tools. Uh, here is the nice example of this cutting or using so so using or something of the mold from uh, valve with this trace and some some cracking traces. Mm. The scratches visi visible on some molds, like in Gabernis, is not good quality, but there are here some 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 uh, scratches uh, show the stage of negative production at first. A sketch or, or draft was made, and then uh, the, the negative of uh, the mold uh, concavity was carved. Mm. Thanks to the macro observation, we can identify also repairs that indicate, in my opinion, the high value of these items. Like here, to this mold. Thanks to the use of specialized archaeometric analyzers, we can reconstruct the process of pouring metal into the mold. We can observe the stages of mold heating, which were associated with either burning ceramic molds or preheating stone molds. The mold temperature directly, directly after pouring the metal can be identified as well. Knowing the temperature of the pre preheating, preheated mold, we can reconstruct the ideal conditions for metal pouring. It's often, often sta stated that the molds found in the graves were used by the people buried in these graves. Often, 
Macroscoping observation allows to identify trace, traces of use. Clear, visible soot or barnet uh, spots. Sometimes, however, these types of traces are not visible. Traces of metal can be identified in moles using non-invasive non XRF analysis. In the case of casting moles from the Legnica cemetery, it was confirmed that all moles were used. Only in the case of the clay core, we did, we did not obtain clear re results that confirmed the presence of copper on its surface. Probably this item was not used before the deposition at all. Methods used in modern foundry allows for preci precise determination of ways of filling molds with metal. The optimal cost casting conditions are determined by uh, dry, uh, 3D modeling of the object and using of specialized software. In this way, optimal conditions for using molds for razors and here for, for socketed access from graves in Legnica Cemetery were determined. To sum up, I have a few insights regarding to the metal worker grave in the Arnsfield. We know that the uh, that male graves are more often identified with metallurgical toolkit. However, we have a very small amount of anthropological analysis to be able to say that this was a general trend. It is important to establish a category of items that allow us to identify metal worker graves. This will allow to, cre uh, to the creation of interregional databases and a broader view of the phenomenon in the context of entire urn fields. Uh, if can we uh, separate the graves of specialist craftsmen in the Lusatian iron fields? What about another profession? For example, weavers, wood or bone workers, butters? I, I leave this question, question open, open. As I mentioned earlier, so-called metal workers' graves are not distinguished by the construction of the grave or special grave goods compared to other objects on the cemetery. Most often, uh, this grave uh, are with a small number of vessels and no spectacular metal objects. But what is obvious, the main factor that distinguishes these graves from others is a set of specialized tools. Someone had to have appropriate knowledge about the cho choice of raw material for the mould, the ability to process, for example stone, some artistic skill, skills related to carving the proper proper mold ca concavity. Uh, we must consider that most often the undamaged mold were deposit, deposited in graves. Equipping the dead person with such value, value, valuable work tools excluded them from further use by the community. Isn't that enough distinction? Here's some literature. Thank you very much.